what was the epiphany that made you make that transition from like, okay, so I lost the mortgage thing. Um, the, the party thing didn't work. Let me get into the real, what was it that made it click that made you get into the real estate business? Was it someone so, else that was doing it or what happened? So once, well, once again, you know, my, you know, my dad, we always had property. So it was nothing for me to, to, to go back and do it. Like they were always telling me, you know, to, to buy some houses. And, um, I think I took, I took my dad's advice a couple of times about houses not to purchase. And, um, I shouldn't have, you know, it was, I'll tell you two different instances of where I shouldn't listen to my dad. I know because parents, parents are getting kids away all the time. I learned that from the too. Like parents, a lot of times are the kids worst enemies, man. But, um, it was a house at 38th and Baring. They went a 40 grand for it. Mind you, this was probably, this might have been 97, 90. No, no, no. I came from school. It was, it was like 01. And 30th and Barron, they wanted 40 grand for that. It's probably a half million dollar probably right now. And then it was one at 38th and Haverford. That one, they wanted 18. Now, but it was a, it was a tree growing out of the back. You know, it took the whole back down. It was a whole big thing. You know, and that probably was the right choice to buy it. But I could have, you know, bought that house and leveled it. I probably made $100,000 just doing that, you know, on, on that one. But the tree was, the tree was scary for me at the time. But I had no money. But I didn't know how to get a mortgage. Plus, everybody can get a mortgage, you know, still then. Yeah, back then. Everybody, yeah, everybody was everybody was still like, hey, yeah, you can have a house. But, but, you got, but you know what? You got to make those mistakes or those non-decisions in order to grow to get to the point where you are now. Um, I was just telling the story our last episode about uh, I had a property on the 1400 block of Colorado. And I had got it for like next to nothing. South Colorado? Yes, South Colorado Street. I got mm -hmm. it for next to nothing. I got it for like 10 or 15 and I, I, I took title, flipped it real quick for like, for, for, sold it for like 40. And I, I thought I was a genius. I was killing it back then. <laughs> and I was just telling each, I was like, now I look and they got like half a million dollar properties on the block and I'm sick. I don't even drive down a block no more. But the thing is that, that I always tell that story because I keep that in my mind as I make a decision with buy and hold versus renting. So now that you got into the business or whatever, um, do you do a little bit of everything or what do you prefer? Do you prefer the long-term buy and hold? Do you like to flip? What, what is your, what is your thing? So I, I like the process of the flip, but I, but I hate selling properties. I hate selling houses. Right. So, but one of the reasons why I do flip, I mean, I do get therapy out of it though. I mean, I like to take, you know, a shell and make it something beautiful. I, mean, I do enjoy that process, but also I use those profits to put back into my buy and holds. You know, it's just that I can buy buying holes without using as much leverage, you know, and contrary to popular belief when people say I'm not, I'm not against leverage. I'm not against, you know, cashing out. I always tell people just do it cautiously. And so how my portfolio is, is shaping up, it's kind of by accident, but I'm, I'm liking how it is, is I have a big mortgage on one house. I cash out everything in one house, like maximum. Then the next house it'll be like just what I put in, like a manageable mortgage. And the third house will have like no mortgage. And that's, that's how it's kind of shaping up. And I really like how, how that's looking. You know, I, yeah. I do want to have a certain number of houses. Cause I mean, to the point where if I need to take a bigger risk, I can take it. And mind you, I don't mind going to zero. Right. So I can spend everything. Right. If I got this, you know, let's say the number is, you know, uh, seven thousand dollars from the free and clear houses. I can lose everything and still have a decent safety net. Because once again, my household expenses are probably only like twenty five hundred dollars, you know, a month. Yeah, you yeah. Know, keep, keep everything low, right? And so, and I do want to do bigger stuff. You know, I just don't, I just don't need to do everything, right? I, I'm not in the mood like Pac Man where I got to buy everything I possibly can. You know, mm -hmm. I can still, you know, I can still pick them. Strategically, you know, let the young guys have that, you know, I try to, you know, you know, it's, it's always, it's like a lot of 20 something guys in here right now. Yeah. Right. And they, they all got into the business. They, they've only seen a good market. They, Man, they, it's crazy. Yeah. You say that. Cause it's like kind of the conversation last episode. She was like, let's see what happens when things really, and I was, and I made that same comment about like, I'm old enough to have been through the bad time. So, but you learn from it. And right. another point you made, and I always tell this story about myself and I'm going to keep repeating it. So as our listeners, like who listen to the podcast and follow what we do, they have an understanding. 
um, I've been to the point where you have 50 or 60 cribs at one time, right? Mm-hmm. But I, I literally was making less money than I am with a, with a smaller portfolio mm. because back then I was buying any and everything I could. I was leveraged ungodly. <laughs> now, now I understand, and I kind of got this, and I was telling Aisha this, I got this from like reading Warren Buffett's book about he doesn't buy until it's the perfect time to buy, so he's always sitting on a lot of cash. Mm. Even right now, if you look up Berkshire Hathaway, his holding company, how much they got in cash, Corey? They got like a, a crazy amount of billions of dollars. They just, they literally just keep it in cash. So, he, and now his is applied to the stock market, but it's the same concept. So for me now, I like to buy cheap houses. So okay. I've bought houses as little as like, I bought houses uh, literally for a dollar from people that were losing them. I bought houses for over, this, this is over the last couple of years, $3,000, $1,000. Like I'm buying houses. That, I can't lose when I'm buying houses that cheap. But, yeah, the fact, know, you know. but the fact of the matter is now you put your own cash into it. You fix it up, rent it out. Like, so my cash flow is so much more 